Hi, everyone. I'm Heather Paduska, star maker for entrepreneurs who want to unlock their potential, command any stage, and make blockbuster profits. Welcome to Thrive, the show where I bring you tips, resources, and people to help you create a brand that makes you happy and profitable. Here we go. Hi, everyone. I'm Heather Paduska, and welcome to this episode of Thrive, how to host a profitable live event with my guest, Linda Kane. Linda Kane is the owner of Blue Diamond Events Management, an events management company for entrepreneurs who want to hold live events and retreats. Her Rolodex is the who's who of people who are giving phenomenal live events across the the country. And I was so thrilled to have her on this episode. We had a couple of technical glitch getting glitches getting going, but it was a phenomenal interview. Linda shared with us just so much content about how you can create a really fun, profitable live event, whether you're just sort of beginning the live event process or you've been at it for a while. She covered how to price your events, how to price a one-day event versus a three-day event, how you should price your offers if you're a guest speaker at someone else's event. She also talked to us and told us about different models of live events and how you can create live events to match your business model and different models of live events themselves, whether it's doing a small tour or doing a high-end retreat in a tropical island. She covered everything. She also told us what days of the week are better to host events and even some really great insider tips to get great deals on venues and at different times of the year to create five-star events at a low, low price. So this was one of my favorite interviews because Linda is a total sweetheart and she has worked with some of the biggest names in the industry. She has a generous heart and rock her brand. I hope you enjoy this episode. Hi everyone, I'm Heather Paduska and <laughs> welcome to Thrive, the show where I bring you tips, resources, and people to help you create a brand that makes you happy and profitable. You're in for high value content coming to you from industry leaders who are growing their business, making an impact, and rocking their business brands. And I'm super excited to have my guest here with me today after a long and treacherous journey through the blabosphere, Linda Kane. Linda, Linda is the owner of Blue Diamond Event Management, which offers a variety of services to the live event industry, whose clients have... Oh, I'm getting a feedback. And she does full production of live events, retreat, or mastermind programs, which are tailored planning for each occasion. Linda pr prides herself on designing events for her clients that meet and meet emotional experience, make mo emotional experiences for the attendees and a profit margin for her reputable clients. Linda's client list and Rolodex is the who's who of the live event industry. If you know their name, she's probably done an event for them. So welcome. Thank you so much for coming, Linda. I'm so happy uh, to have you here. Sorry, I sorry I kind of butchered the intro. It's been um <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, this is like a live event when um, you were, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we'll be opening the doors in about five minutes. We're having some technical issues. Yeah, a little bit. But uh, we're here. But we're, we're here. here. We're here. And doors are open. So come on in. <laughs> awesome. I love it. So if there's anything that I misspoke during the intro that you want to add to or change, you're the owner of the Blue Diamond Event Management Company and you do live events for um, the industry of coaching and anybody who's doing live events. So who are some of your, feel free to add and edit for what I said in case sure. I made a mistake. But who are your typical clients and what are the typical things that you do for them? Okay, so uh, currently, well, um, our typical client stays with us year after year after year, and we help them grow their business using live events as the platform. And so we've had wonderful, wonderful um, experiences, and currently we're working with Adam Urbanski, Laura Langemeyer, Marty Batista, uh, Lisa Cherney. We have... Um, uh, done programs in the past with Nancy Marmalejo and Michelle Sism. And, uh, oh my gosh, uh, we have Jay Facet out of Canada and Joshua Hayward, uh, Mastermind to Millions. They're coming up. Um, we have a variety of clients that we're working with. Um, we have clients, uh, Dr. Ray is a dentist 
and she trains uh, dental technician um, offices how to better serve their clients. So we do a live event with her and her association every year, which so, is so sort tell of me, off the beaten path. Yeah. So how um, do you? What does a live event for a dentist look like? I'm. I uh, want to know. It's really, it's really cool. Um, what she's been specializing in is bringing. It's really funny. We met at a Lisa Sasevich event. And uh, so she said, you know, I want to do a live event for dental technicians. And she's been a dentist for 30 some years. And she just says that there's a need in the industry to, you know, better serve uh, clients in the office. So we put together a program. We did our first program two years ago. We're going to have the third program this coming October. Um, we started with like 20 people in the room. And now she's going to have up upwards of 100 people this year in the room. Wow. And basically, um, and in the process, she organized and designed a nonprofit association for uh, dental technicians, um, especially those in pediatrics. And she got that to be board certified. So now she's being able to also offer continuing educations. So not only is it just a live event, but it also has this educational, ongoing educational component for the people that are in the industry. So basically what that live event looks like is we bring in an image consultant to talk to the ladies about how they're looking and how they can all be uniformed in the office and still um, maintain their personal identity. Mm -hmm. um, she brought in a finance person to talk to them about what they could do with their own personal finances and also um, how to drill down and be more profitable in the office for the doctor. So really that's the thing that's so great about live events is it doesn't matter. You don't have to be a coach to have a live event. Mm -hmm. Whatever industry that you're in, you can create and design live events. And that's where my passion comes into play is that I love working with coaches and people that are doing transformational work. But our team also likes to look at whatever your industry is, there's a live event that can be there or using live events can be there for you. It's just a matter of talking it out, strategizing and figuring out, you know, how we can design something for you that works. And we do a lot of that. That's cool. Us. And, you know, depending on who you are, if you're a person of integrity and you love what you do, everybody's got a transformational business, right? I mean, Absolutely. Even, if, even if you're selling mattresses, you're helping, if you believe in what you do, you're helping people with their health. So mm -hmm. um, I, I love that it's not just coaches. So one of the questions I have for you is, sounds like, they bring in really interesting speakers. Do you help curate the talent that comes in for the events as well? Yes. If you are a speaker out there and you've got a message and you're looking for a platform, a lot of my clients, um, depending on you know what it is, I'm I'm always cross marketing between clients. I have clients to speak on other clients' stage. Um, and then just people that I meet when I'm doing my own networking, when I'm doing my own uh, booths at trade shows and things like that, I'll meet people and I'll bring them in. Uh, for example, I was at a Monica Shaw event in April and I met a gal there. She happened to be a doctor um, and she um, was a former nurse and then became a doctor. And she has worked a lot with people at the end of our, you know, getting ready to pass on to the next place that we're going and out of that work she created a program that really gets you connected to what she calls the end game and it's all on your legacy so I've had her come in and talk about what legacy is and what legacy means and, cool. and it, yeah it's just and really it's all cool. from an energetic space mm -hmm. and it's really cool a really cool talk so she's been on several of my client stages wow um, I love as a, speaker, as an example so. Right. So that's awesome. So it's good that you and I are connecting because a lot of people that I work with want to be speakers. So, you know, yeah. they, you know, that's their and what I help them with is to really hone that message. So when someone like you comes along, they can say, this is what I speak about. This is what my platform is. This is how I can <laughs> give service to your organization. So that's really cool. Love that. And it's good. And I have a whole uh, portfolio that I keep of photos and bios and I'll follow them and send my clients to look at them on, you know, their websites or Facebook or, you know, so anybody's interested in doing that, you know, they can contact me and we can put them into the, into the mix and just, you know, you never know where it's going to, where it's going to go. Awesome. So if someone is interested in that, as, as someone who hires speakers and presenters or, or 
um, promotes them or suggests them to other clients, what do you look for in a presenter? What, what do you look for in terms of their presentation and also in terms of their website, their material? Like what is it that catches your heart, your eye, your strategic mind about who you would want to hire? Well, um, first and foremost is the um, the synergy and the connection to the client. You know, for example, I'm going to use my client, Marnie Batista, as an example. She has a program called Dating with Dignity, and she does this uh, three-day program every January and every June. And it's designed for primarily women who are have been unhappy in love. And they're really just looking for, you know, they really want to connect and find that person you know, spend the rest of their life with. But before you can do that, you have to do that inner work and you have to work on yourself and make sure that you're ready. So Mm -hmm. we're always looking for speakers that bring in that personal development component. Mm -hmm. Um, So we've had um, Matt Boggs um, come in and talk about, um, he has a program that's um, on the, it's called like, like the man's man and talks about what men are looking for in relationships with women. So we've had him come in as a guest speaker, which it works really well with her program because the ladies are very interested in finding out, you know, how men think. So that's one, (laughs) you know, so that's one example, you know, like how do these guys think so that we can really, you know, tell them what they really, what they tell them what they need to be doing. (laughs) Now you need to find a woman who can go to a man's conference. Exactly. That would be Marnie. <laughs> okay, guys, here's what you need to do. Let me tell you. Um, so, so I kind of really first and foremost is, is there a connection? So if you came to me and said, you know, Linda, I want to speak on one of your clients' stage, we'd find out, you know, what it is that, that you're doing and is there a connection, first, of all, first and foremost. The second thing is, um, is your topic relevant? You know, is it relevant to what's going on um, in the industry? Um in the world, you know, is it um, is it really going to uh, be something that's heavy content driven, um, not just you know um, splash and go and you know um, we I don't really look for motivational speakers so much. Um, I look more for speakers with really have great content and that are going to help drive the audience either toward the client's goal or really be able to offer something that is going to enhance the client. Um, I'll give you another example. Katie Weber is a client of mine, been a client for a long time, and she teaches people how to do feng shui as a business. So she's a trainer trained the program. Mm-hmm. And if you like feng shui, you go to her class. She It's a three-day intensive program uh, with a year-long coaching program afterwards to help you build a business around uh, etiquette, um, uh, around uh, feng shui. Mm-hmm. And so it has everything to do with, you know, you can go out and feng shui people's offices. You can go out and feng shui their personal life. You can go out and feng shui their, their home setting, just whatever that is and how you want to design that as a business. So what we brought into Katie's program when she came to me four years ago, she just had the trainer trainer piece. And what we've expanded on through a lot of um, just looking at how she can enhance her training program and what do the people that come to the um the program need. So we have a web guy that comes in now and he's designed sort of a boilerplate template that they can use and it's priced right. So they can just sign on with him, get their website up in about a week. Hmm. And um, it has a video component. It has, um, you know, a pricing, it has a shopping cart um, and they're able to just at least get their message up and get started. So we brought in that piece. She also has a gal that comes in and talks to them about image and how you look when you're, you know, don't be in your jammies on your calls, you know, and just all those kind of things and how always to be, you know, looking your best and what that might look like. So she she does a video piece. And then we have a video, an AV guy that comes in that does video. And he, we actually, as part of the program, they get to do their little 30-second commercial. Um, so they record that at the program. And so when they leave, they've got their website. They kind of basically have some confidence and then they have their little intro video to what they want to teach on. So when they leave the conference, they're actually really ready to start some business. So they're much more set up 
I love um, that. to move forward. Yeah. So just however we can design. So those were, those were three components that we were able to bring into her event. So those were three people that I knew in the industry that I connected to her that are now part of her team. I love that. So and that you that's really you, good. Yeah. It's, I, it's, I, it's fun to listen to the different things that people can how you can create it's like baking a cake all the different ingredients that you can bring together to make it really yummy and and yep. valuable and and people want it and want to devour it so that's that's a testament to to your um strategic thinking about that as well so i want to ask you a question about something you mentioned that the price was right you there was a product or something that they were offering and you said it was priced right is there um sort of a a ballpark of pricing that people should be paying attention to when they're selling things at live events or is it really dependent on the industry no um there there sort of seems to be this trend from something that is a around a 197 297 price point upwards of a 997 price point you typically wouldn't be a guest speaker on a, on an average stage we'll say um, and not sell something, um, it would all be 997 would be your most highest price point. Mm -hmm. Um, and a 997 price point would probably be like a six week course or, um, a half EIP day or, um, maybe a pre recorded program with a Q and, you know, a couple live Q and A calls, um, type of thing for something around 197 or 297. That might be just a one-on-one -on -one strategy session, or it might be a little mini course, you know, a little three-day, three-week course, um, you know, with a and a and some pre-recording. But, um, yeah, if you're speaking on um, stages like uh, Suzanne Evans or David Nagel or uh, James Wedmore or, you know, Eric Lomquist, some of these other bigger um, stages, you could probably, um, Lisa Sasevich, those kind of stages, you probably get away with something around fourteen ninety five. But I don't see people selling as a guest speaker selling anything bigger than that ticket. No, that's really good to know. Yeah. So it sounds like you can do really well doing a live event. So tell tell us what are the benefits of doing a live event, how it can be how it can profit your business. Why should someone host a live event for their business? Uh, well the the first reason that you want to host a live event is to keep connected to your tribe and to have that personal connection. Um, th things like blab, Skyping, um, you know, Facebook Live, all these new platforms gives us we get to see each other we get to have that personal connection but there's nothing like being in a room when you're in a room with people and you're um as a host and you're just um uh feeling the energy of the room making those personal connections developing those personal relationships um as much as we can use video in our business it's nothing like having that personal connection and just really being in the room so number one it really creates um uh, it just creates your rainy fans and really brings you into that personal connection. So that's yeah, way I, I can describe that. Yeah. And I think that there, like for me, a lot of what I do is performance coaching and I've hosted smaller master classes, but mm -hmm. you have to be able to see the person's body on the stage. Yeah. If they're going to command a big stage. You have to see them on the stage and see how they're yeah. carrying themselves and how they're yeah. projecting their voice. And it's really hard to do. You can do it on video, but you know, like, you know, we're like this right now. That's, you know what I mean? You have yeah. to, so some, I think some people, the experience is just necessary to be live. Well, we, um, here's an example. Uh, I had a client who refused to go out in the audience or, you know, it was like she did her presentation and then she was off stage and then came back and did a presentation and was off stage, came back and did a presentation and was off stage. And I said to her, I said, you know, you know, I just my observation, but I think you need to like get down and walk in the audience. I think you need to stay at break and talk to people. And I feel like you're having a disconnect with your audience. And she was like, oh, but it takes so much energy to do that. I need to go back and drink my juice and put my feet up. And I said, just I think you will get just trust me. I think you will get more energy from connecting with your audience than you will by putting your feet up in the back. Um, so just at the next break, just 
you know, go with it. Let me, you know, see if you that works for you. So we had her come out and we had her, you know, mix and mingle. And it, it was like, it was like a miracle, watching a miracle happen mm -hmm. for her because she had been taught and trained that she should be kept off of her audience. You know, that she shouldn't, you know, she should be, um, keep her break time precious to her was what mm -hmm. she was taught. By yeah. the coach that she had yeah. um, but once we started putting her out in her audience and she was connecting with her audience she jumped her sales at that event she actually doubled her sales she went from uh, she had had a 75,000 uh, profit margin on the event that she'd done the year before and she jumped that to uh, she had over 115 sales awesome and it's awesome. that personal connection the other thing that um, having a live event done is you don't have to have the huge stage with all the pipe and drape and all of the pizzazz and the big lights and everything, you can have a moderately designed stage. Um, it's the experience that they're having with you and the connection that they're having with you that is getting the people that want to buy and work further with you. So the more that you can bring in great content and, and have that um, personal connection and experience with people uh, is what's going to give you the good profits. And so yeah. if you price if you price it right and you know you negotiate your contracts right you find your you know there's all kinds of space you don't have to go to a hotel but their hotel is kind of the number one place that people do so people can stay but you can also use you know um, other facilities around town um, and people can stay at you know local small uh, hotels for example you can use a convention space or you could use a meeting space in a law firm you can use uh, meeting space at city clubs, places like that that have really good space that's a lot less than a hotel space, and people can stay at neighboring hotels. So you oh, can get very really creative. Idea. Yeah, you can get really creative in your budgeting. Um, so I have a lot of clients that so we start small, you know, the courtyard by Marriott type property. Um, we build, grow the program, and then they can expand out to, you know, Hilton's and Hyatt's and, and get larger space. But the idea is what I like to do is work with the clients, like what it has. What do you want to make? You want to make a hundred thousand? Then we'll work backwards and we'll price it in so that you're going to make your hundred thousand. You want to make two hundred thousand? Then we work backwards and reverse engineer the event so that um, you know you can meet that 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 profit margin that you know meet that goal that you want to meet. Um, my our average client that puts anywhere from uh, 50, 40, 50 people in a room to one hundred fifty, two hundred people in a room. Um, our average client will will come away with about a hundred to one hundred fifty thousand dollar event, um, and that's is kind that of true? more. Is that the, true for someone who's not established? You know, if you're talking about Suzanne Evans, you know, that's one thing. But what if you're sort of a, <laughs> she does millions. <laughs> she she can she can she can sell snow to people in the desert. I mean, she's a phenomenal salesperson. So let's well, say you're not Suzanne Evans. Let's say you're up, right. up and coming. You know, is that true? Like, is that 100K true for the average person, the average entrepreneur who's doing you events? Know, you know, it is because um, it depending on how you work it. And that's the thing about live events. Everybody thinks, oh, I can do a live event. I can't do a three program. A live event does not have to be 100 people in a room. A live event can be as simply six to 10 people in a room. So, for example, I have a client, her name is Shamika Tankerson, and what she does, she she strictly focuses on sales conversations. Mm -hmm. How are you doing sales? What does your sales look like? What are your price points? What's the strategies around it? That's all that she teaches. She does mm -hmm. a three-day training. It's really intense. She brings in anywhere from uh, six to ten people. So she averages about eight eight people. Um, she charges um, uh, nineteen ninety five, uh, so she makes fifteen thousand in a weekend because she just does a um, conference room in one of those um, executive centers. So it costs her like a couple hundred dollars a day for her conference room. Um, she just does it, you know, around a round table, and she brings them in for three days. Uh, they go off and do lunch on their own. She has a dinner with them every evening, but she lets them go off on lunch on their own. Um, she does provide dinner on the two nights, and it's kind of like a working dinner. They kind of do a mastermind around the dinner. Um, and she does that four times a year, and then she sells people from that and her um, 
webinars that she's doing, she's selling people into the one-on-one -on -one coaching at a $25,000 price point. Nice. And that's nice. her model. And that's what she does. So every quarter she's doing a small little intensive and then she's, you know, selling and she's working with probably um, anywhere from six to 10 people each year um, at that higher price point. She doesn't take awesome. more than 10 clients at a time. Yeah. And, and so, Dan was just saying sometimes smaller, more intimate events can warrant um, a higher price. So I was going to ask. Absolutely. I'm going to ask you about that as well, because there's a trend now for people to do, you know, high end sort of luxury retreat, sort of yep. um, vacation, entrepreneurship, learning, all of those things. So what, what advice do you have around those kinds of events? Well, see, and that all goes back to what? It all goes back to that personal connection, spending time mm -hmm. with your mentor, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so a lot of people are finding that if they vacation with someone, they take them on a trip or um, that the person becomes their friend, you become uh, more vetted in the business. So as a mentor, you become more vetted in your client's business. That's what I do as an event planner. Um, I'm unique in that position is that I want to see you succeed. It's almost like if you're not succeeding, then I feel like, oh, I've you know, somehow we've got to change the strategy. We have to look at things differently because when my clients have a profitable event, then I feel like I've succeeded, you know, for them as well mm -hmm. um, in helping them hit their marks. So when you're working with a mentor, it's the same thing. If you can imagine if you have clients that are paying you, you know, twenty, twenty five thousand dollars a year to help you're helping them in their business. You're really helping them grow. You're helping them establish a you know a really good business. How great would it be to go spend seven, 10 days with each other, you know, in Bali or in Paris or just even in a mountain retreat. Um, and how and much do that, those, and, and what's have the that price time together? Um, you know, people are doing, I'm seeing everything, I'm seeing, gosh, price points from uh, $3,000 up to twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars $25,000. You know, it just kind of really depends on how much training and content is taking place during the trip. Um, and also the destination of where they're going. Um, one of the things that's really fun that, that people don't know a lot about but um, works really, really well is cruise ships and taking a group out cruising. Because, yeah. you, you know, the meeting space, you know, where they do the entertainment and all of that yeah. in the evening at the cruise, those, all that room is available during the day. Um, oh, there's wow. nobody in those spaces during the day. So instead of people taking that day excursion, you rent that room. And you bring them in and you do your training during the afternoon mm. um, or during the day. And you do, um, you know, so they cruise, they go visit. Then one day you have this full day training. And the thing that's really neat is if you take 10 people, you get discounts on the rooms. You're considered a group. Just like oh, cool. if you're going to a hotel, you're considered a group. So if you have um, 10 people is the minimum. So you get 10 state rooms and you have, you know, 10 to 20 people. And um, you get the meeting space in some in some on some lines, uh, Royal Caribbean and Carnival. You actually get the space for free, um, so wow. you don't have any room there. Your meals and everything are taken care of already because it's the price of cruising. So you just add on this, you know, training piece. So it makes it really cool because you go do the Bahama cruise and you know do a seven day cruise, and you, three of those days can be training. Yeah, I see my so, cruise on a yacht. So, yeah, <laughs> I want my retreat on a on a yacht. <laughs> yeah, going through the Mediterranean, I can see that's it. That's right. Uh, <laughs> totally. That's my, that's my retreat right there, baby. <laughs> yeah. So there's all kinds of you know there's just all kinds of ways you can get really creative with it. Um, I have a gal that does a mountain retreat um, up here. I'm in LA area, so in our um, uh, Lake Arrowhead area in the mountains that are just about an hour above us. They have a great retreat center, um, and she does horseback riding, and um, she actually has uh, one of those ladies that comes in. They use the horses to do training where um, they work through some of your, like, deeper fears and things like that, and they use horses as the medium for that. Oh, cool. So you get in the rink with the horse, and there's, like, this whole exercise and stuff that you do. Um, so, you know, she brings in groups of 20 people, and she's just having a ball. And that's what she does every quarter. She brings in, the, she does this mountain retreat. And um, I think it's about $5,000 to attend her, her three-day program. Um, but so it really, that's the thing about live events is 
it can be if you know if you have an idea you can learn to create and, and and bring it and create a live event around it and bring that model into your business and be profitable with it at the same time so do you think that um, it's possible to have a business model that really is profitable that is only live events or does you do you need to have another engine running un to supplement that as well you know most of my clients have some sort of uh, either webinar sequence um, or six-week courses that mm -hmm kind of help feed into the live event. Um, it's um, not even that feed into the live event, but that are just other options of training yeah, that's yeah. out there. Um, mm -hmm. And um, so does it have to be to do the live event business? No. I think you could just do live events and just bring people in the room. Um, well, I do have those two clients that that's all they're doing. Shamika, all she's doing is self-training. Mm -hmm. um, she doesn't have any other products. She's just bringing people in, doing the three days, and then turning that into the one-on-one. -on -one. But um, I think it's helpful if you do have some other products um, just to, what do they call it, the low-hanging low fruit? Mm -hmm. um, just to bring people in to get a taste of you and to get a taste of what it's like working with you. Um, and, and what point but, yeah. should and what point in your business should someone do a live event? Does it is there a right point to launch a live event? Um, well, let me think about that for just a minute because I have, you know, I really think it just depends on your model and what you want to do. Because if you just want to do small programs and work with, you know, six to eight people at a time or six to ten people at a time and use that formula. Um, no matter what you're doing, if you're, you know, for example, if you're building websites and you want to teach people how to, um, you know, do their own wet WordPress site, you could just bring six to eight people into a workshop and do a live event around it. Um, and then instead of doing one on one, you know, one on one website design, you could do it as a group. So I don't think it, I don't think it necessarily is there's any specific time, but as a, as a coach, if you're doing coaching, if you're doing transformational work, um, if you're doing business coaching, life, um, if you're doing uh, life coaching and in that model, you probably want to have, you know, a good three, 4,000 person list. You want to probably have a few products under your belt um, and then bring in live events. But if you're just um, doing it where you're on a smaller scale, then I don't, you don't necessarily have to have other products. I think you could use live events and, cool. and, and be profitable at it. Hi everyone, I hope you're enjoying the show. There's still more great content to come, but I wanted to take just a minute to talk to you about a new course I've created called Close Any Room. You may have noticed that all of my guests know how to speak about their businesses in a clear and compelling way. But that's something a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with. And it's something you need to know how to do so you can convert your audience into more sales. And that's why I've created this course. It's a six week audio course to teach you how to craft a signature talk so that you can authentically give value and close more of your audience from the stage. In the class, you learn how to create a clear and compelling point of view, how to organize your content and give great value to your audience without giving away the farm, how to structure your talk so that it seamlessly closes your audience at the end without feeling salesy. And I also give you templates and instructions how to create marketing materials, a speaker sheet, and all kinds of sign-up sheets when you're giving your talks. And finally, what everybody's hot to know, I also give you tips and resources on how to find speaking gigs. It's an all-inclusive course so that you can start closing and selling more from the stage. And as my free gift to you for tuning into the podcast, I'm giving you my free webinar, also called Close Any Room, and you can listen to it at clearvoicebranding.com forward slash close dash any dash room. And it will give you lots of tips and information to get you started on how to create that signature talk that sells. Okay, we're going to get back to the show now. There's still more great content to come. Thanks for joining me. 
So if somebody wanted to hire you, how would how does that process work? Do you do marketing for people around their events? How do you how do you work with people? Like give us the sort of the from the beginning to the end outline. So typically what we do is our two main things that we do with people is we work with them on what we call full event management. So they know they're going to do a live event. We work with them from the very, very beginning. What does it look like? Plan it out. Um, give them ideas and strategies around the program, whether they should use sponsors or speakers and where those speakers and sponsors would fit into their program and how that looks. Um, help them find their location, do their contract negotiation, just everything that you can think of that takes place around an event. So that's our full mm -hmm. service event management. And that's our highest level of working with clients um, where, you know, we're just, we coach them all the way through till the day of the event. And then we're there on site, make sure that everything is working, you know, smoothly and well. Um, but then I have other clients where we kind of are working along the path with them. So we do something called Event Ready, and that's a three-month program where we where we take a call every other week for three months. So there's 12 calls, and basically we map it out, and this is what you're going to need when you get ready to do your live event. This is how a one one day will look. This is how a three day will look. Um, this is you know walking through budgets and price points, and just kind of educate them during that process. So they're basically event ready. So let's say you know. Someone comes to me and says, you know, I, I know I want to do a live event. I just don't know when. So then we would put them in that event ready program. And that's like our one nine, uh, our 1997 program. And the really cool thing about it is the 1997 then stays as a credit for a year with us. So then when the wow. client is event ready, that becomes the deposit, part of the deposit. Of that's cool. Going into a full cool. event. So it's a win win situation. So they get, yes. you know, they learn the platform, they get foundations to build on. And a lot of the clients, after finishing that three months with us, what they do is they go on and they'll do several one days. Um, and they'll do one day trainings or a day and a half trainings. And then that is a really easy platform to convert into a three day live event. Um, the other way that clients work with us is we just do a strategy call. You know, they just call up. I spend 90 minutes with them. We talk about how live events could look for them. And then, you know, we work from there. So, but most of our business comes from uh, uh, referrals or people that have been at an event that we've done and they've experienced our team and they want to mm -hmm. work with us. And, um, and I do some marketing. Uh, last year or two years ago, I started doing some trade shows and doing some uh, breakout sessions and talking about live events. Um, so I've uh, gotten some clients that way, but pretty much we're a referral business. People love us. And I would like it. working with us. And so, um, well, I can fly for that. sure. <laughs> so, yeah. But, and I was just going to say, I mean, you're so personable and it, I can just imagine working with you. It's, you know, you, you, what you were saying, I feel like I feel like right now you're kind of working the room and, you know, you're <laughs> off the stage and yeah. intermingling with everybody. And it's such a wonderful vibe. So, well, and now, I, where, just, I really love events because um, they they're just so fun and people have such great experiences with them, you know. And then when the client is profitable, it's even better. And, um, yeah. and just watching them build their tribe and building those connections um, and seeing people come back year after year after year and continuing to work with the client. And that's the other thing that's really cool is if you're just starting out in events and you've done, a few, you know, you do a one day, you know, you do a couple one days and then maybe you turn those into a day and a half. And then all of a sudden, you you know, you tweak and work on your model and you find out, okay, I can teach on this. I need to expand on this. And then it eventually grows. And then you, you feel financially ready to do a three day program or you're, you know, um, financially ready to even just do more, uh, one and one half day trainings. Um, and can I ask you a question mm -hmm. about the financial part you were saying, um, financially ready. Is there sort of a ballpark for like what, what a one day you should charge for a one day event yeah, if versus gonna, a three day event. If you're going to do a one day program. Um, uh, let's say it, you're going to do like from a nine to five on a Saturday and um, you're going to uh, do heavy, you know, obviously you're going to do heavy content and you're going to make an offer for them to continue to work with you. So mm -hmm. I would do that one day anywhere from a 197 to a 297. 
depending on the topic and how much content you know you're going to do. Um, if you're if you're just going to do a training on um, uh, like uh, you know how blab works, for example, <laughs> the which is very valuable. <laughs> the do's and don'ts of blab that might be a I, I think we could give that training right now. <laughs> I think so too. That might be like a one ninety seven price point. You know, okay. and then you're going to, you know, roll them into, you know, either a six week course or a VIP day. Um, but um, but you can do. A, a, so I have a client that started her business off doing face how to work with Facebook. And she did what we call we created what we call the five city <clears throat> tour for her. So she did one days in five different cities. And, and these were cities that were drivable to her. So she was in Atlanta. So she, she did like uh, downtown, midtown, and then she did downtown, and then she did airport, um, you know, and then she did, you know, north, uh, north Atlanta, and then she, you know, did a, a couple other cities in Georgia. So that was kind of drivable for her. Um, so what she did is she did these one-day city tours, and then she took those, and then she did one in Atlanta, one in Chicago, one in New York, one in Houston, and one in Los Angeles um, as she started expanding her reach. And then now she just does a three-day program every year and has people come to her in Atlanta. Um, nice. And so that's kind of how she started to build her live event business. But the five-city tour worked really good because what we did is she charged two ninety seven. She had about anywhere from 15 to 20 people at a time in this, you know, in, in the area. She sold them into a because she was working with Facebook ads at the time, how to use Facebook at the time. Um, she's gone on now to like do full business, you know, strategies for people. But um, she did two ninety seven for the one day that sold into either a VIP day with her at uh, twenty nine ninety seven, or it sold. They had their option; they could do a VIP day. Or she also had a nine-week course that they could buy into, which sold at nine ninety-seven. Um, after the first couple one days, we mixed the nine ninety-seven and just sold people into her VIP. So at every five-day program she did, she averaged five sales into her VIP days. Um, and so just by doing the five cities, she was earning. Um, uh, she was having a hundred thousand dollar profit with the five cities, so oh, it was like nice. doing five days and making a hundred thousand plus. And awesome. so the yeah, so then she just did that. Mm -hmm. Like the first year, she did that model every quarter, and then she expanded on that. And then eventually, like I said, now she's doing you know three day programs with over a hundred people in the room, and she's you know. I don't know, her three days now are averaging almost a quarter million every time she does a three days. So um, it just depends on how you know you. Yeah, so there's a lot of different ways. So you don't have to, you know, you can get very creative. That's what I love about this industry. It's like whatever you're doing, you can get very creative around it. Um, I love it. And one days are a great way to get started. So I love that. So, yeah. so if people want to find you and find out more about about you, where do they find you? How can they hook up with you? Oh, uh, they look for us at eventsbyblue. I'm sorry, I forgot my website. <laughs> um, eventsbybluediamond.com or events at blue dot. What is my website? That's horrible. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, I don't gosh. have it. I just had blue a brain. Blue diamond event management. <laughs> blue diamond. Blue diamond event. My God. Sorry, everybody. Uh, um, it, it events by Blue and Tom and is yes. and uh, the blue does not have an E in it. So it's oh. events by Blue Diamond Tom. Um, no E in the blue. And um, you can reach me at my phone as well. Our number is 626 252 2834. And you can call us there. And um, our uh, email is info at events by Blue Diamond. Info at, at events by Blue Diamond dot com. Okay, I put those in the chat, so those are in there. Uh, well, I want to just really, really thank you for sharing this wealth of information. It's so exciting.
exciting to think about it on lots of stages, sung in front of thousands of people. I love being on stage and I love, yeah, fun. oh, and I love coaching other people to do that. It's so fun to watch that transformation that takes place from that, you know, sort of like not shy, but not as, not as powerful. And then to see that on stage mm -hmm. and to see them, you know, like really it's, there's nothing like that live when you experience it's like yeah. going to a rock concert. I took my daughter to, to um, Madison garden in New York for oh. a rock concert this spring. And I was like, do I want to go to a rock concert with, you know, four 14 year olds, but we went to hear fallout boy and I have fallout boy on my, um, oh. my, my playlist when I'm at the gym and I played it the other day and I went, and I had a completely different experience running to that song than I did before. Cause I had all this muscle memory of seeing them and mm -hmm. having the music, you know, thump, thump, thump through your, so yeah. it, so I think there's, it's, there's just nothing like live and also Life is about connection. I was just listening to a Harvard mm -hmm. um, professor who's done a 75 year long study about um, health and happiness and the healthiest, happiest people in the world. The number one indicator is their relationships. It's not whether they smoke yeah. or not, if their cholesterol was high, it was their connections yeah. and their relationships. So there's nothing, nothing like that live experience. And um, if you're a mm -hmm. hugger, you know, that's the best place to do I it. Know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So I really, I just want to, you know, yeah. acknowledge you for, for bringing, bringing this model to more and more people, not just the entrepreneurs, but the people who want to go to the live events and have those experiences too. So that's really wonderful work that you do. So thank you for yeah, doing that. Yeah. And the that. connections that are, and the connections that are made there too, because just, you know, you may not ever want to do a live event, but you can find JV partners. You can find people that are going to help you grow your business. Absolutely. Um, you know, mentor you on your own, you know, on your own journey with different things. That, you know, we each are trying to work on, you know, health coach, a wellness coach, a financial coach, you know, just your own business coach. So even if you don't, you know, necessarily want to use live events as part of your business, a live event experience can help you grow and, and become better at what you're doing as well. Yeah. Yeah. I, I totally agree. And I, and I just, I really want to thank you for being here. So one of the things that I, I like to do at the end and I, I borrowed this from someone else I saw doing podcasts, but uh, I think it's so great is, you know, we're communing now, we're sharing this time and this space together. And I think it's really, you know, a sacred thing, you know, we're making, even though we're not live where we are connecting. And um, I think gratitude is such an important part of life. And I've tried to make it a practice for myself. And, and I always ask my guests, you know, it, as we're here right now in this moment, what are you most grateful for Linda? Oh, I'm, I'm just really grateful that I have the support of a loving, loving, loving husband and family that allow me to do live events because I'm away a lot um, and I'm with my clients a lot. And uh, so, you know, we're, we're out on the road probably about 32 weekends out of the year. And so it's a lot of time away from home. So I'm just really grateful because I have such a wonderful support system and a grateful family. And my family's very involved um, in the business. And often if you're at a live event and it's local in the Los Angeles or Southern California area, um, you'll see my family there because mm -hmm. uh, they, they come and they help out and they're extra hands. Uh, when our clients are in our area, so and that's, that's tax one of most too, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't quite figured out how to deduct my husband. <laughs> well, I know a lot of people want to deduct their husband, but that's not what we're talking about. <laughs> that's so awesome. Uh, that's so awesome. Yeah, no, he's great. And you just one quick question because you made me think of it right when you said that. Are mo is there a d are there days that are better to do live events? Is it better to do them on the weekend or on the week during the week? Uh, I'm so glad you asked that question. Um, you know, there it's not. It really, as the host, what works for you mm. and what is best for you. Uh, typically, because a lot of people work, so we're conscious of, of people working. So typically, the Thursday, Friday, Saturday is a really good format. Mm. Or you can do a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday and have people come in and start on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Um more important is what you're building and the budget that you want to work with because a lot of hotels are not really busy 
certain seasons and they're also not busy certain times during the week. Mm. So, so for it's just a quick example. Don't be afraid to go to Palm Springs, Las Vegas, and the desert properties in the summer mm. because you're indoors anyway and they have perfectly working air conditioning. And even though it might be 115 or 120 degrees outside, you can get um, five-star room space for close to $100 a night for your guests, even less. What? And you're in. Wow. Yep. We we just booked a client for mid-August. It's going to be 120 in Vegas. I mean, it's going to be hotter in Hades. And we got her an 89-room rate at the Green Valley Ranch Resort, which is a five-star resort in Henderson, just off the Strip. And um, so, you know, it's, I mean, she's going to be sold out. People are like, they're coming, they're bringing kids, they can play at the pool. You know, right. we're adding a whole, we're adding a whole new family section to her program. Um, we're adding, you know, a whole new, you know, things for your spouse or significant other to do and a whole kids program. Uh, you know what? I so, love that. I love that. I'm going, yeah. I'm going to be doing some traveling and some speaking this year in some cool places. And I've had that same thought. I have three kids and I'm like, man, it'd be really fun yeah. to have them there, you know, but I'm going to be working yeah. when I'm there. So that's right. a great idea. So, so we're taking advantage of the, the low price point and the fact that, you know, it's going to be hot and there's things that kids can do and just designing a whole program around that for her. So we're really excited about that. Um, and also, too, you know, <clears throat> if you like snow skiing and things like that, you can build an event around going to those, you know, going to ski, ski resorts and things mm -hmm. like that in the winter. And you can build, you know, it's just if you can imagine it and, you know, we can help you create it. <laughs> well, I've already told you what I've imagined. I'm on a yacht. Someone's bringing me a glass of champagne. You can work with that. I'm good. You got it. Would love to. Awesome. I, I actually know some yacht companies. <laughs> I'll be calling you. Awesome. Uh, thank thank you, you so much, Linda. It has been an absolute uh, pleasure interviewing you. You've had so much incredible information. I hope everybody out there listening is as excited as I am about thinking about how to make your own unique, creative, highly profitable live yeah. event. It's, it's just such a wonderful way to build your business and make new friends and, you know, just connect in a deeper way. So thank you. Thank you so much, Linda, for sharing. Thank you. Thank my everybody. Pleasure. Yes. And thank everybody for being here, the audience, as and as always, for my guests who come and listen to the interviews, you can get my free webinar on how to become a profitable speaker like we talked about by going to clearvoicebranding.com forward slash close dash any dash room. Okay. Thanks everybody. Have Love a great it. day. Bye -bye. Bye. 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 Thanks everyone. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Thrive. I loved having you here. I love having you as part of my community. And if you're enjoying the show, I would love it if you share it with your friends on Twitter, on Facebook, or wherever they're hanging out. I also want to let you know you can leave me feedback or comments. I love hearing from you. Just post those at heatherpodeska.com. You can also leave suggestions for topics that you'd like to know more about, or if there's someone you'd really like to see on the show, let me know that as well. Well, okay, until next time, here's to hitting all your high notes. Take care. Bye-bye.